I thought that I would combine two questions that I've been asked recently. One is to do an updated palette review uh, on this Quilla palette and then the other question was about my brushes. So I thought I'd combine those two questions into one by showing you. Now I'm a left-handed person so my brushes are on my left and my palette is on my left and if you're right-handed you'll have your palette on your right and your brushes on your right it's because it's going to make you more efficient and it really helps in watercolour because it's a time sensitive medium. Firstly the biggest update to my palette is that I'm using less and yes uh, less and less of these yellows so lemon yellow lives there but you can see there's um, nothing in it and this is aureolan yellow and all that's left is this crumbly little lump but what I'm going to be doing and I'm just using the end of this um, brush which has a chisel end love those brushes and I'm just gonna get rid of that lump. I find that if you try and reconstitute watercolor that has gone lumpy, you're just likely to get lumps in your painting. So my main yellow now, it used to be cadmium yellow light, and I've been transferring slowly to Hansa yellow light because it's more transparent than cadmium yellow light. So I've dug out Lunar Earth. This is the other big ch change that I'm making to my palette and I'm going to put it over there. It's um, It will reconstitute nicely. It is a little bit lumpy but I know that those Daniel Smith colours all will reconstitute. Lunar Earth is a brown so it's sitting on the outside of my wheel and on top of that it's super granulating. So there are moments when I want it. Uh, to, to use a super granulating colour in my work. I love what those super granulating colours do. However, this one in particular, Lunar Earth, is so opaque that I'm finding I'm using it less and less. Other colours that I've got sitting on the outside of my wheel is Sodalite Genuine, Daniel Smith, super granulating colour, and I absolutely love it but it's a mixed colour and it's not overly transparent so it does not get to sit in the special spots. The other colours I've got sitting on the outside of my palette is Cobalt Turquoise Light, also absolutely beautiful as a colour but quite opaque and gold, uh, that's a Holbein gold. The um, other change to my palette is that because I'm not using raw sienna so much, I do use burnt sienna, it's sitting on the outside there, I've started to incorporate to my palette much more is this beautiful quinacridone gold and I'm using that more and more as a yellow but I do need to shift it over there put it over there so that it's closer to yellow um, but it's also closer to the browns because it's so brown when you see it sitting in the palette like that okay I'm going to clean that one out as well be wasteful I know it's a waste just to dig it out and um, not to paint with it but I want to be set up so that I am efficient and fast and I really love the idea that I get in the zone and I never stop to think about which colour I'll use because I'm using up a colour. This is ultramarine blue, cobalt blue moving moving closer up to a pure blue so that's phthalo blue that's what I have there as a th as a pure blue this is phthalo blue and yep Technically it's phthalo blue red shade, but I cannot tell the difference between phthalo blue red shade, phthalo blue and phthalo blue green shade. So I don't care, I'm just sticking them all in there. This is cerulean and it's quite an opaque cerulean. So I've been using that less and less and using way more cerulean chromium, which I'm finding is a little more transparent. Uh, coming up to my greens, I used to have in my perfect position here, this little knob indicates this is a perfect green, I used to use Viridian but I'm finding that I couldn't find a Viridian that wouldn't reconstitute and I love filling up this palette at the beginning of my painting sessions and leaving the colour there. So I've been transferring slowly to using Thalo turquoise and I know it's a really blue green but that suits the way that I work you can see on my palette there's instantly you can see I use lovely lots of blues I absolutely love it and then I love to play around with the reds they're not really red they're pink um, so the pinks coming over to the 
warm side, quinacridone magenta, which I adore and I use it all the time. And all of the quinacridones are beautifully transparent. Quinacridone gold, quinacridone magenta, quinacridone rose. Um, all of the, anything with quinacridone in front of it is such a brilliant way to go. And same with the phthalo, they're going to be beautifully transparent. And I'm trying more and more and more to just move to a transparent um, palette, which is why Lunar Earth, being very opaque, has been moved to the outside, has been cast asunder. Well, not really, it's there, so I can still use it. And I have this tube and I re-bought it a couple of months ago, so I'm definitely going to be continuing to paint it because I do love to use up my stash ever so slowly. This is Scarlet, uh, Quinacridone Scarlet, so it is a transparent red, but I really don't use that much, and you can see that I've let that run down, but I'll use up that li little bit. The pure red I is not a red, it is Quinacridone Rose or permanent rose, I use them interchangeably. And then this one over here will is uh, opera rose. So it's that insanely lolly pink color, which every now and again is just pure fun. Um, this one here is quinacridone magenta. Apologies about that. That's magenta. That there is alizarin crimson. So a, again, a beautifully transparent color, but not near as easy to paint with as quinacridone magenta. It's a stainer, alizarin crimson, and a little bit difficult. You, it's hard to do beautiful washes with it, um, I think because of the way that it uh, stains the paper quite quickly. I'm not actually sure. I'd love it if anyone knows a little more about that. Um, over here, I also have a green that I need to get rid of. So that is Cascade Green, another Daniel Smith, beautiful color. It's one of those colors that splits into two. So it's got phthalo and something, another browny color. It's a little bit like, it's a little bit like quinacridone uh, gold, but it's not. So I've got gold over there. I've got um, no room, which you can see that's why I left it there. I'm going to stick it in there. Again, this is really expensive and I'm likely to use it. So I'm going to put it in the little spot where it's been pushed out to the side. And that will limit the greens that I use and I will automatically be starting to paint more often with phthalo turquoise. Thalo turquoise, anything with phthalo in the front of the name tends to be transparent. It has, that's the sum of my knowledge so far. So again, if anyone knows any different about that, I would love to hear from you. This color here I haven't used for ages and I don't actually know what it is, but I suspect very much that it is phthalo turquoise. So I probably put it in there and then started to fill this one up. So I'll do a little test on that, see if it is quinacridone turquoise. There it is. The, this is one of the many beauties of this palette. I don't need a piece of paper. I can just test it straight out on my palette. Here's the phthalo turquoise. Oh yeah, look at that. This is just a darker version. Oh, there's another green mixed in there because it just shifted a little bit. But I, for me, that's uh, close enough. I have towels all over the place. That's the other part of my setup is to stick towels everywhere. And that way I encourage myself to make a mess. And now I'm going to have cleaned up another one. Yes, yeah, definitely phthalo turquoise. Look at it, practically wants to, it's such a stainer. It practically wants to stain my palette. This is my cheap brush that I use to clean the palette. So thank you so much for giving me thumbs up and the encouragement. And please ask me anything else. I really love questions because then I get to find out what you're interested in. See you next time. Bye.